Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on calcium signaling. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how this sodium calcium exchanger works in a bit more detail, and i.e. how it uh, manages to uh, transport uh, a cal one calcium ion across the cell membrane in exchange for, oh dear, what have I done there? That should be one calcium, not two calciums, one calcium. You bring in three sodium ions and uh, you extrude a single calcium ion. I do apologize for that in the previous video. Right, uh, so let's have a look at uh, how this protein actually works. So basically, uh, this goes back to what we discussed in the first video of how pumps work. So basically, in order to uh, have a pump, you have to have uh, two gates. So a good cartoon model for this sodium, um, sodium calcium exchanger is we can draw the pore like so, and then we'll have a binding site, basically. We'll have some binding site in here. And then we'll have two gates, okay? Right, so initially, what we'll start with, the situation we'll start with is that the cytosolic gate is closed. The extracellular gate is open, and you now have calcium bound to this site here. So that's where we'll start. We'll start at this position here, and we'll get back to that position. So it's a great cycle. So we'll, we'll show how you get uh, from this position to extruding the calcium, and then back all the way to here. Okay, so this is where we're starting. We had to start somewhere. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the um, sodium calcium exchanger here. So this is the NCX, and um, the si extracellular gate here is open. So let me color this in. Okay, right. So this here, this blue gate here, is the extracellular gate. Right. So extracellular gate. Okay, and you can also see on this picture that the cytosolic gate is closed. So this down here is the cytosolic gate. Okay, I'll just move this up. Cytosolic gate, cytosolic gate. Okay, right. So, what's going to happen is now free sodium ions are going to come in and displace this uh, calcium. Now, they don't all come in at once. Initially, let's draw these sodium ions here. Uh, so initially what happens is that two sodium ions are going to come in from the extracellular uh, fluid and they are going to displace the calcium ions. So these are going to come in and basically what they're going to do is they, they're going to compete with the calcium ion for that binding site and the calcium ion is going to be released into the extracellular fluid. So it's going to go to this situation here. So here's the pore again. Here's our binding site. Now it has two of these little sodium ions bound to it instead of the calcium. Uh, the um, cytosolic gate is still closed, and the extracellular gate is still open. Right, so let's colour everything in so that everything's nicely colour-coded. Oh, and the most important thing is that the calcium ion has now gone off into, uh, into the extracellular space. So there's our calcium gone, and what we're going to see how, where this calcium came from. Okay, so the calcium ion has gone, We've now displaced that calcium ion with these two sodiums. And what's going to happen now is that another sodium ion is going to come in. So the final sodium ion is going to come in now. So we've got two already bound. Here comes the third uh, sodium ion. That's going to come into the pore through the open extracellular gate, like so. And it's, again, going to bind to that, um, that binding site there, the binding site here. Okay, uh, so when it binds to that binding site, what's going to happen is it's going to trigger the closing of the extracellular gate and then the opening of the cytosolic gate. So what's going to happen is if I draw the next step over here, so you have now three sodium ions bound to that uh, binding site here. So here they are, three of them bound, and now the cytosolic gate has opened and the extracellular gate has closed. Right, okay, uh, so cytosolic, uh, this is the extracellular gate over here, closed now because the so binding of these free sodium ions has changed the conformation. Now remember, our calcium ion has now gone off, it's in the extracellular compartment where we want it to be, and uh, I'm going to colour code the cytosolic gate as well because why not? So this pink is going to represent the cytosolic gate here, 
Okay, so here's the cytosolic gate open now. So, in the cytoplasm, what's going to happen is that a calcium ion is going to come in. So here's our calcium ion again. And now, now that the protein has changed its conformation, the affinity of the protein, of this binding site, for these sodium ions has changed, basically, and it would far prefer to be bound to a calcium ion. So what's going to happen is that the calcium is going to come and displace those sodium ions. So calcium is going to come in, displace those sodium ions, and the free sodium ions are going to go out. And what's going to happen is that calcium is going to bind there, the sodium ions have now gone out, they're in the, uh, in the cytosol now, so they've gone into the intracellular compartment, and what it's going to trigger is when the calcium binds there, it's going to trigger another conformational change, and the cytosolic gate is going to close, and the extracellular gate is going to open. So, what that will do is it will return you to this state over here, basically. So you will go back to the original uh, starting position that we were at, which was we had the extracellular gate open, the site had got zolic gate closed, and a calcium ion bound to that binding site. So you see now the importance of having these two gates in the function of this sodium-calcium uh, exchanger. Okay, and the sodium-calcium exchanger is really important for uh, extruding calcium in uh, tissues where you have very high transient calcium levels, such as muscle cells and neurons.